What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, yes, you are seeing double. Somebody liked my sticker bomb Mario cabinet so much, they wanted it themselves. Check it out. We got sticker bomb Mario Konami style cabinet. This one is running a Pandora's box with a coin door. Who doesn't like Mario? All right, guys, always keep him busy. I do always try to get at least a video or photos and stuff of all the cabinets I build. Just been kind of slowing down because orders have been picking up, but it's been a crazy, I would say about three weeks, um, a lot going on. That is one, I, that is another one. That, th there's so much going on, I can't wait for you guys to see all the details. A lot of videos coming up. Basically, we got a four player Pandora's box build. I got the two player Pandora's box build with a coin door. I have a Hyperspin 40 terabyte build coming up, and I have somebody's ultimate console that's gonna be shipped out in about a day or two. So stay tuned, there's a lot of videos, definitely a lot like pertaining to Hyperspin and my updated ultimate console. So there is a lot going on. But on this one today, we're gonna be focusing on the Mario Sticker Bomb Konami style cabinet. Again, somebody reached out to me via email, said, hey Vic, I'm looking for a cabinet. I sent them a couple of pictures and all that. Uh, it was all through email. Yes, it wasn't on Facebook Marketplace. Sent him a bunch of pictures and all that. And he said, hey Vic, I actually like your sticker bomb Mario cabinet. Can you make me one? I said, obviously, of course. I was so, what's the word? I was so, I guess, proud and happy that somebody saw the sticker bomb style cabinet and was like, I like it. I want it too. And I'm like, okay, cool. I was like, you want like exact sticker he's like Vic I want everything like your cabinet but I do want a different marquee and he didn't want LED buttons he wanted professional you know buttons RK buttons from my understanding he is gonna bring this home but then it kind of switched up so I think it's gonna go into some place where it's gonna accept money obviously with the coin door customer was like hey Vic is there a way to you know have it accept like a dollar and then let it play. I was like, yes, the Pandora's box will let you do that. You could set the amount of money needed to activate and all that. So again, I'm not too sure. I believe it might be going into a business. I don't know. Again, for me, and I do get this email a lot. For me, I'm just selling it to a person. Whatever that person does with the cabinet is on them. It might be going to a business. It might be going to somebody's basement. I don't know, but either way, I get the job done as always. This is running a Pandora's box 18S Pro. And again, customer did request a coin door on it. Awesome stuff. Again, Konami style cabinet is the exact replica of my Nintendo Switch Konami cabinet. 32 inch screen. And with this one, because of his patience, an awesome dude, I added a dedicated four way in the middle of this. Super excited to show this one off. So it's pretty cool. Right now, again, two player Pandora's box. And I do have a four player Pandora's box coming up. So videos coming to that soon. Same kind of deal. I got Alterniverse. He's got basically a comic book shop. That's going into a comic book shop. Same thing, it's gonna take a coin door and all that. That one's got four players on it. This one's got two players on it. So it's pretty cool. A lot of Pandora's box action. Again, I always suggest Pandora's boxes to go into commercial spaces. They're very user friendly. You kind of get like one or two small hiccups, nothing crazy. But these are just basically, in my mind, designed to it's commercial abuse. You could leave these on 24 seven. Nothing happens to them. Um, uh, basically you pick a game, after three minutes it'll exit back to the main menu. Once you put a quarter in and you start a game, I would say a good 95% of the games will automatically drop the quarter in and start the game. So I'll go through a couple examples. Big thing also in this video, I'm gonna give kind of a tutorial for the customer. This way they can kind of see like how to take the control panel off and how to open up the back door and all that. Now I've personally done about, I would say a good 12 to 13 of these cabinets, mostly honestly Raspberry Pi builds. Um, I've done two Nintendo Switch cabinets, which is pretty cool, like my personal cabinet. But this one is the first ever Pandora's box build with a coin door. And it's gonna be shipped out of, I got a free company picking it up. He, you know, it's gonna be shipped out. And I definitely wanted to do this certain cabinet and all of my other cabinets, I learned it after like the third cabinet. Um, I basically set this thing up like a real arcade cabinet. What do I mean by that? 
Number one, this does have latches. This has control panel latches. So for you to take the control panel off, you do have to unlatch. I'm gonna go through in depth and everything. You could do it through the coin door or you could do it by opening up the back door. Now again, on all my builds, all, every, uh, all of them, again, laminated birch, that's my standard now, all of them on casters. That is just a given. They will always be on casters no matter what. Now, after about like the second cabinet, I learned something because a lot of people that they pick up the cabinets or I send them out, sometimes I do get the lift gates. I like to get the lift gates, but they do charge more. Other times I've seen like vans pull up and you know, they basically put the cabinet on its back, which is perfectly fine. But after like learning and basically to save time and styrofoam, I've now done an indent on the cabinet and now it is safe to put it on its back. What do I mean by that? I'll show you my personal 55 inch four player cabinet. I'll show you the difference real quick. Let's get out of self mode because you guys always say I give you motion sickness. Let's take a closer look at all these cabinets and let's go in depth. So now I really got this idea because I had somebody email me looking for a cabinet and they were big on LEDs. But he said that he was talking to some local guy and the guy doesn't do LEDs like I do. Um, I think this was why. So take a look again. This is my personal first ever four player by Vic 55 inch cabinet. Again, this is my personal one. This is really the first one I ever did. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about when it comes to the indent. If I lay this cabinet on its back, as you can see, the LEDs are very close to the floor. After learning and basically really kind of studying it, I said, you know what? I have to now redo the way cabinets are built. Instead of going edge to edge here, I basically went inwards and added an indent. You could see it cleanly here. Again, as you could see, got a good half inch. LEDs cannot be marked up. So if you lay this down on its back, there's no need to worry about the LEDs. Same thing if I look at the Rev B, so second rendition, you can see the indent now on that. So again, half an inch indent before anything. So no need to worry about LEDs getting hurt. They never did get hurt because again, I always put styrofoam. Anytime these go lay down, I always put a block of styrofoam on the top and on the bottom. But that's just part of the game of learning learn from experience and no need to worry about LEDs getting ripped out and all that. So that's pretty cool again, even with that, uh, even when I was doing Game Room Solutions cabinets, you do have your plug outlet here. Same thing, Game Room Solutions cabinets are flush and I've never had it happen, but you could imagine even the, the, the switch here sticks out. Imagine loading that into a van and then sliding it, that whole thing might rip out. So now I do not have that issue anymore. Again, I am not using Game Room Solutions for cabinets anymore. I am doing them all myself. Again, three quarter inch laminated birch. And again, on casters. So this is not MDF. You don't have to worry about casters being ripped off or anything like that. This is awesome. Now, another thing from learning is I've learned to raise the cabinet up a little bit. So right now it kind of also, somebody messaged me, it was like, Vic, I love the design because it looks like it's levitating. Again, LEDs under the cabinet. I'd never done that before. All the new cabinets that I personally build now, they do have the LEDs underneath. I actually now run 32 feet of LEDs. That's how much LEDs are needed, 32 feet. Somebody did recommend that I should get the addressable LEDs to make it look cooler. If you're down to pay the extra, why not? I could do it. But definitely casters help levitating and it's not tall enough. You can't even see the caster. That's what's so great even with measurements, now you can see the caster there, but standing, you don't see the caster. It just looks like it's levitating. It's awesome. So now again, a big thing to keep in mind again, I will make these custom made. If you need certain heights, if you need certain widths, you need certain depths, you could let me know, I will make it happen. If you look very carefully compared to my personal Konami cabinet, this control panel is deeper. And again, my first Konami cabinet that I made, honestly, I made the control panel too short and I had actually cut the panel here because I had the micro switches sitting here. This now though is set. Again, you live and you learn, but I basically mastered it. Again, I never did like the second rendition of Konami is when I learned, okay, I gotta make sure the control panel is deeper. And it's awesome. Again, and this one is the first one ever I did 
dedicated four-way. So we do have our IL, Industry Lorenzo's joysticks, eight-way joysticks, six-button layout on both players. And we got dedicated four-way with one fire button. Usually dedicated four ways, you can do three fire buttons, games like 1942, but majority of them are good to go with the one button. So it's awesome. So now it's crazy again, LED wise is 32 feet. It's two reels, actually a little bit more than two reels. Again, you got the whole entire bottom. The inside of the cabinet is illuminated because it's basically one solid strip. You even have LEDs underneath the control panel. And obviously you have LEDs on the marquee and in the back. So. This certain cabinet here, especially with the Konami style cabinets, I can't put LEDs here because this panel does come out. Now I could essentially, yes, I could do it by basically, you know, leaving a strip here and then cutting out the door here. That is just too much measuring and time and possible of messing up. I don't want to even deal with that. I'll show you, for example, again, the Alteniverse. This one is different because you don't really need too much room to enter. This is a big enough room right here to enter and because the TV is external. So this one technically does have more LEDs on the back here. But again, nothing where the access panel goes and you can see on the inside, that's where LEDs are. So if, ever, if anybody's ever working on this one, you could basically turn the switch on and now you're illuminated inside as well. So now let me tell you what I did real quick. So again, Pandora's box, 18S Pro. I just did a video on how to wire up a coin door. This does have a functioning coin door. I don't have a quarter with me right now, but essentially once you put a coin in, I will raise my volume. Again, I'll show you everything. And you could hear coins get dropped. So coin door does work. And again, Pandora's box. So what I did for the customer, because again, I'm understanding that this might be going into a commercial space. I removed the PSP, the PS1, and the N64 and Dreamcast games only because those games are like timed. I left like the Super Nintendo stuff, but the big thing is that once the cabinet turns on, you're automatically greeted with basically arcade stuff. So there's a lot of King of Fighters. I'm still going to fix up the list for him. Uh, and I'm also going to do a tutorial on how he could do it on his own. For example, like there is a lot of like Street Fighters, even Metal Slugs. There's Metal Slug 3, Metal Slug 3 Plus. I don't really know what 3 Plus is, but I'll disable it. That's going to happen at the end of the video to give him kind of a personal tutorial. You could see again, Street Fighter 2, World Warrior. There's a couple of them. I'm going to basically narrow it down to one. This way, if a customer is playing it, they don't have to worry about, oh, which one did I pick? I, I'll help the customer out with that. Now, it's also pretty cool. The company I normally get the Pandora's boxes from, unfortunately, everything is getting, you know, prices are going up. Inflation is happening. The original Pandora's Box 18S Pro I usually get had 4,500 games. This has 8,000. Uh, I'll be brutally honest. There's a lot of du duplicates. That's there's just you could already see how many Street Fighter 2s there are. That's a given. I mean, it's got your basic stuff. At least it has the main arcade titles. I would say a good 2,000 to 3,000 main arcade games. Then also remember this does have Super Nintendo and like the NES, and like I said, I disabled PSP, uh, PS1, and Dreamcast. So there's a lot that could happen with this cabinet. So now again, customer wanted yellow joysticks on this build, and he did not want LED buttons. He wanted like something that's gonna take abuse. So obviously you gotta go with the HAP style buttons, concave, awesome stuff. This is basically competition setup. IL, Industry Lorenzo joysticks are beautiful, uh, again, easy stuff i did give them led buttons though for like the start the coin the four buttons here for admin buttons they do not work with pandora's boxes but he is future proofed in case he ever wants to do a pie build batasara build or a pc build so it is future proofing i always do that now i would rather give you guys the buttons and just have them not work at all than to take the panel, drill four holes, and then I have to basically reapply artwork because you gotta, you're gotta gonna mess up the artwork on that. So it's just a given, I will always put the four admin buttons. So yes, these buttons are here, they don't do anything, but it is future-proof. Uh, again, basic stuff, you got a 32 inch screen. I definitely love, again, like I said, artwork is now my thing. This has the speaker panel artwork, just like my personal one, I love this about it. You can see the speaker panel holes, 
I basically take a drill and drill out the holes. I pre-drill and then apply artwork and then drill again to make sure these holes are clean. Again, customer did want his own marquee. I guess he found this online, which is great. It's awesome. It's multiple characters. It's kind of perfect for a multi-cade. It's awesome. The big thing I do want to note about the Konami cabinet, uh, Plexi in the beginning for me was sketchy because I did have a table saw. Now I actually use a track saw for everything and it works amazing. Before Plexi was a pain in the ass to deal with. Only because of the, the, the table saw. If the, if, if I didn't lay the Plexi down, I would have, if it, it, it'll take a, a chunk out and then the whole thing rips out and I destroy a piece of Plexi. But now I'm pretty confident and comfortable with my saws. Plexi, great, good to go. So Plexi cover right here for the bezel. I just, ba I just spray painted black, honestly. That's just the best way to do it. And I did sandwich style Plexi on this. So there's basically Plexi, then the marquee artwork, and then another piece of Plexi. So it's sandwiched in. And the cool thing, I mean, I don't know if it's only me doing it, but I don't like to use those marquee holders. They're usually only black. This is straight T-molding, holding in this marquee here, and it's not going anywhere. I love how I did it again. That's what's so great about it. I basically take a notch out. Again, T-molding is holding this in. Awesome, it, I, I love it. I love everything about it. I think it looks amazing. I think it looks great. Nice, big marquee, whereas my personal Konami cabinet was a little bit small. It was actually a little bit in more. This is right up. This is awesome. I, I, I think it looks great. So now again, what's great about the Pandora's box, I, I just stopped recording, but after three minutes of no activity on the joysticks, it brings you back to the menu. And again, like I said, I'll make a video for the customer. I do have coin buttons here, but I will show him how he could disable them and enable them. Basically, we're just going to remove the ground button from the micro switch. Because in all honesty, if you are going to take money, you don't want these coin buttons working. But if he is going to bring it to a home use, you do want to have these coin buttons active. I don't like sending, setting up Pandora's boxes to free play only because if you set it to free play, the video that's going on here doesn't continue. It doesn't go down to the next game. It'll only play this video for eternity. So that's why I set it to coin play. Even if it's a home use cabinet, I will always set it up for coin play. So now it's great. Like I said, you can even press the start button. It'll go to the search function. I could look up Pac-Man real quick. And I just want to show off the dedicated four-way. So Pac-Man, we'll just pick, oop. We'll pick the final burn, which I think it just automatically did it. Awesome. I'm going to press start. I got my volume low. Could raise up the volume. And again, dedicated four-way. It is perfect for Pac-Man. And as you can see, right dead in the middle, awesome. It's it's great. It's definitely amazing. I do have 2.1 Logitech Z313 sound system in this. And I do have the controller right here. The volume controller, you just put your finger in here. And you could control the volume. Awesome. Well hidden. It's perfect in case he's ever in business and it's too loud. You just come right dead in the middle and put that in. Awesome stuff. Again, dedicated four-way. You could hear the click and you could actually visually see the four way as I go. Whereas eight way playing Pac-Man on an eight way is just, it, it gets difficult. I mean, you could probably knock it out, but a lot of people do not like the fact that it's very sensitive. Again, you can't play Pac-Man on eight way. If you hold down the player one button, you have the option to exit or insert a coin. Uh, so I'm going to show off real quick. We'll do Galaga. Just so you could see the fire button that's available. And again, I always, always, always aim to put um, a dedicated four way on all my builds. Even these four player cabinets, they're gonna get dedicated four ways. Uh, and here we go. So again, controls, Galaga is left and right, and fire button. Awesome. Again, essentially, you could use this and the fire button here. They're basically linked in parallel and it works. It's awesome. Just another big reason, honestly, why you need a dedicated four. -way. I've been doing this for almost eight years now. And the biggest complaint in the beginning was, Hey Vic, I'm trying to play Pac-Man. This joystick, it's, it doesn't, something's wrong with Pac-Man. It doesn't work. You need a dedicated four way. I'm just so happy. I got it done on this Konami cabinet. Awesome. I, 
it's going to be the standard now for all the Konami style cabinets. So now real quick again, just so some people could understand Pandora's boxes. Right now we have no money in the machine. I can't move. Hey Vic, it's broken. No, you need to put a coin in. So again, you could put a quarter in or for right now, you hit the button, the coin button, and it inserts a coin. So now you're able to navigate. Um, so the big thing is, again, if you put two quarters in, you'll be able to navigate. I'm going to just launch a game. Let's say we're going to do Street Fighter 2. When you pick a game, normally, I would say, again, 95% of the time, the game is going to start up and then it's going to automatically put the quarter in, making it good to go. You just have to press the start button. There's a small handful of games that it doesn't do that. I'm going to show you, like, for example, Marvel vs. Capcom. So as you can see, game started. Awesome. I just got to press start. And now we're able to play. If we put more quarters in and let's say player two jumps in, most of the time you could just press player two start and it brings them both in. So you got now two player action, very easy. To exit, you long press player one and then you press B. So it's A is A, is a and B is B here. So if I do real quick, um, I believe, let's do like Mortal, Mortal Kombat was one. I have three quarters in this machine right now. Let's see how Mortal Kombat goes. Some of them does take a, a little bit of a second to load up. Mortal Kombat is one of those games. It's really going through like the EPROMs and all that. We're going to let Mortal Kombat load up. So instead of boring you guys, we're going to now come here. Let's see. So as you can see, we had three credits. Credit one, it needs two credits. So right now, like if you're pressing start, oh no, it ate my machine, it ate my quarter. Let's see if you press player two start. Player two start did enter it. But it will player two start that. So that's awesome. That's A-OK. -okay. But now if you want to bring player one in, what happened, Vic? Why can't I play it? You have to actually hold down. I'm going to actually make sure I have coins in. Oh, I didn't have coins. Again, if I press player one start, nothing happens. If you hold down player one start and press A to insert a coin, then it'll let you play as player one. We just ran out of time while picking it. There you go. Player one has entered. So some games, it doesn't like, as you see, there was three credits, three coins before we started. You might have to just hold down player one start and then insert a coin. That's all you gotta really do. But all the games work, it's awesome. Let's exit out. Uh, I know for a fact like uh, Marvel versus Capcom was one of them. Uh, we'll do that real quick. And though, to make my customer's life easy, I believe there was two versions of Marvel versus Capcom. And no, it's not Marvel vs. Capcom 2. That's the Dreamcast version. Uh, let's just see. I'm going to probably be able to disable one. So as you can see, we have two right here. Marvel vs. Capcom, Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes. Let's do this one here first. Marvel vs. Capcom really was a two-quarter game. Let's see. So it actually did one. Awesome. So we're good to go there. I'm going to exit out real quick. I'm going to put more coins in. We're going to load up the second Marvel vs. Capcom gonna make a mental note because I'm gonna most likely disable this one. So as you can see, see, game started, but it's waiting for a coin. So now like a customer that put a money in, they're gonna say, hey, where did my quarter go? I'm gonna disable this one. As you can see though, the second, the, the this one here, it's gonna start the game and drop the quarter in, easy to go, boom, perfect. Again, a small handful of games are like that, but it's really not that drastic, it's not that difficult. I'll show you guys real quick the cabinet in the dark. Okay. Awesome. Just totally illuminated. You could set the LEDs to fade. I have it set to white right now. The LED buns are set to red. Anytime there's a red channel, it will illuminate the bun. So I actually do have the machine on fade right now. And it's just awesome. Love it. Again, back glow. As you can see, I don't have it against the wall, but you do have back glow here and pointing upwards to the ceiling. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Again, control panel with the LEDs and you could see that kind of levitating look. It looks great. Again, my garage floor is shiny so you could see the actual LEDs. Somebody did make a comment, that's why they want me to put adjustable LEDs, but LEDs are LEDs either way, illuminated and beautiful as always. All right, so now I'm gonna go into basically showing off the cabinet, opening up the cabinet and all that. So it's pretty cool. This is what's great about Pandora's boxes. You literally just hit the switch. You don't have to worry about shutting down. It's not like a Raspberry Pi. You could just hit the switch. If you turn off the system, just give it like 15 seconds, 30 seconds before you turn it back on. 
Um, that's also for the TV and all that. So right now, customer gets it, he's gonna plug it in, he's gonna flip the switch, and the best thing is that everything turns on with a flip of a switch. That's the big thing with Pandora's boxes. That's the big thing with all my builds. I like to use TVs that automatically turn on. Everything turns on, just like a real RK cabinet should. So this is exactly what I want. You're gonna get a little um, RC video in the beginning, and then your system's gonna boot up and all good again same thing remember your audio volume control is literally a notch out right here see that notch can't do anything but rock the volume it's a it's a little wheel right here you basically go left for louder and right for lower awesome again that's what's great about pandora's boxes that's honestly why when i do so much research for tvs for example this tcl 55 inch that turns on once i plug it in same thing with samsung's that's the right I use those as the main two. TCLs and Samsungs are usually that. 32 inch insignia on this one. Again, this insignia TV turns on. I've had a couple of, um, I believe it was Vizios. They don't turn on once you put power on unless you put it to like store mode. But there you guys have it. System is on and it's ready to work. Now this is pretty cool for this customer. I'm gonna actually open up the back door. This is what's so cool. Again, I, I love this because it's literally like a real RK cabinet. You're gonna need a drill there are four screws holding this in. We're gonna take the back door off and you're gonna be able to see the inside. All right, I got the three screws out. We're gonna hit this last one here. And now this is really like gravity fed. It's just being held down by gravity. You kind of tilt it back. The t molding is pretty perfect on it. So you just gotta give it a little pull and we are out. Back door is now open. Set the back door aside. Let's take a close look on the inside. So again, as you can see, LEDs throughout, no need to worry about that, that just illuminates. Again, for LEDs, they all have to be like wired up so you don't have to worry about any wires getting disconnected, but LEDs are good to go. We can see the inside of the cabinet. Again, clean, everything's gotta be clean, wiring clean. You got your subwoofer on this, again, 2.1 sound system on this. You do have your Pandora's box right here. Awesome, with the audio jack. Coin door here, I'm gonna put a little box down here to catch the coins. And again, using real arcade hardware, I do have the two latches that are keeping the control panel down. Awesome, I love it. So now when you are removing the control panel, there's three connections you have to take out. There's one here, which is the Pandora's box family harness. That's why I put the Pandora's box close here. You don't have to actually take the door off. You can just put your arm inside the coin door and release the hatches and you're good to go. You just gotta slowly be sure to take it out. So you got one connection there. This right here is to the coin door. So you could take that out while the control panel's out. But on all my control panels now, I do have the separate LED connector here. Again, control panel has LEDs and it's got a disconnect there. So now, again, I do have the coin door still wired in, but I could essentially come here and pull out. And I gave you enough slack, definitely with that coin door, as you could see. I'm like a good three feet away, all that. You can just disconnect those two right there. It's very easy and you're basically cleared out. If you ever need to work on the control panel, it's good to go. So now if you're ready to bring the control panel back in, I basically have these two wooden legs here. So one and two, that's where it's gonna basically find the alignment. So you just wanna kinda nice and gently bring it down. You can kinda, kinda bring it left and right and boom, it dropped in, awesome. As you can see, not much play, it's definitely locked in, making sure that nothing is really in the way. So when you get underneath it or in the back of it, the only main thing you wanna make sure is that the LED kind of cleared the way, and you just connect it. So the LEDs here, there's an arrow here and there's an arrow on the black here. You just connect those. Then we have the family harness. There's only one way this family harness could enter back in. It's got a little tab, so that's in and you put the coin door. Again, these are very simple. I did it in my how-to video. You just pull these out and put these in. Easy stuff, and you're back and good to go. The harness and all that, nothing's in the way when you put coins in. Easy setup. Let me put the LEDs in. Maybe I could do that on camera with you guys. Again, there is an arrow into an arrow, and you can see LEDs now for the control panel light up. That's it, you're set, we're back in. Also, you can see real quick, that is the Z313 volume knob. So on the outside there, you could spin the wheel and that's the volume knob. Again, clean wiring as always. 
this subwoofer bolted down it ain't going nowhere again i do build the arcade cabinets batten style so real way arcade cabinets were built staples screws on the back here nothing visible in the front just a thing of beauty i love it i love every single build now that i'm doing i just, i i can't get enough of it and one final note there's gonna be a plastic baggie with this it will have the key to the coin door the tv remote the led remote and the power so just so you know when you do get it uh, i'm gonna have it all in the baggie you'll have obviously a power cord there but up top i do have the remotes they are gonna be in the bag but you do have the velcro here so this is for the tv you don't really need that but it's always good to just safely have it and the led controller for the leds just the last thing to note is that right here underneath the panel right here is your sensor bar so if you wanted to let's say turn off the leds or turn them on just aim right here so if you wanted to leave it as like red you want to leave it as blue or green you could just do that i'm going to leave it on white and then if you get it you got some nice settings like fade and all that i usually leave it to fade so last little quick remark before this goes out now real quick for this part i'm going to show the customer how to enable games you could do it from the coin door but basically on the pandora's box there's a little button right here that's going to bring you into settings so if you're looking at the cabinet right here we're going to look at the cabinet here if you're looking at the cabinet the, the pandora's box is here somewhere you want to go on the left side not the right side you're going to put your hand in and just feel for a little black knob and push it in and now you're into the settings so it's also pretty cool with the pandora's box you do even have a setting here for key setting and io test so if you press button one this will let you test the buttons out just to make sure everything works so if you ever have any questions about hey vic i think a button's broken go into the io test and you're good to go i have to exit by holding down start and a we're going to go back this is d so that's d right here and for him again the one thing he did want was that he possibly i'm not going to do it now but i'll show him the coin setting one coin equals one credit so if he wants to do four coins for one credit you could set it up like that too he did request that so there is a way to do that you just go to coin setting and move left and right we're going to right now go into enter game settings and we're going to go into edit game list again pressing button one again I'll, if you ever need help you can facetime me this is your current game list here if I go to the show hide list, if I press the C button, these are all the games I have hidden. Again, I did this on purpose. It's a good 200 games only because these games are like, I have a feeling customers are going to be like, hey, you know, I was playing Mortal Kombat 3 and I was still fighting. These are basically time games. After five minutes, you need to put another quarter in. And I just have a feeling he's going to have a problem with customers. So I just disable them. But if you did want to enable them, let's say we want to do Mortal Kombat 4. It just says here A for display. So if you press A, that now goes back. If I go back to... Do, 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 if I go back to show display list, I now have Mortal Kombat 4. And if I want to hide it, you just press button A. And poof, gone. That's it. So again, when he starts, I do have NFL Blitz because that is usually a popular game, but that is the N64 NFL Blitz. So that is a time game. But like right now for him, I'm going to kind of go through the list and definitely disable a couple of these. Um, like let's do the Metal Slugs, for example. Um, like Metal Slug 1, the plus we don't need, so we're going to hide that. Metal Slug plus 2, we don't need that. So again, I'm basically pressing A. And it's not deleted. You're not deleting the games. You're just hiding the games. So that's what's awesome with this. If you ever wanted to enable them, you could always come back down and enable them. So for me personally, I'm going to definitely go through like, I'm going to hook them up with these because there's just a lot of Street Fighter 2 additions. You see 2V. There's nothing on that. That's a regular one. I'm going to most likely keep that one. There's just a lot. Set 1. No need for all these duplicates. I'm definitely going to help them out. And we're going to fix the Marvel versus Capcom. But essentially, again, for you to get into this menu, you just got to hit the little knob and navigate. If I go back to the D, we go here. Um, you don't want to delete the games and be sure not to delete all the games. You want to be sure to hit this edit game list. Do not go anywhere beyond that, honestly. And uh, basically, when you're done, you just D, cancel out, and now you're back. Again, you can't navigate unless you put a quarter in. That is a big thing. Other than that, though, 
You got everything you could think of. The main classics. This has 1942. Um, if you want uh, King of Fighters, uh, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong is on this. Again, a very good, clean arcade setup. Nice little... Oh, Circus Charlie. Beautiful game. I had that. I played that a lot as a kid. But honestly, there you guys have it. Another Pandora's box build going out to a customer. I hope you enjoy it, bud. If you have any issues, just give me a call. You shouldn't. I just hope it gets there nice and safe and sound. There you guys have another amazing Konami cabinet. Oh, man. That sticker bomb Mario. I love it. VicVP, Game Case Arcades. I'll see you guys on the next builds. Bye.